Hi everybody, so in video 1959, we got this. We basically tore the heart out of a PC fan to get us what is effectively a generator. Now it's a bit weedy and wimpy because it's got very little copper in there and a particularly weak magnetic field, but it works and we can get a surprising voltage out of it by spinning my hand. Now, there's next to no torque on this, and if we remember that a generator generates voltage in direct relationship to B L V sine theta, where B is the strength of magnetic field, L is the length of the wire, sine theta is the angle the wire makes the magnetic field, and V is the velocity or the speed at which it turns. When we have a fixed generator like this, and it's going to be important because most of the stuff that you use are going to be fixed generators, where you've got a motor and you're repurposing a motor. The only thing we can vary on that is the speed or the torque, and of course they play off against each other. And this one, next to no torque, it was a fan motor, so we know that we need a lot of speed. And one way to get speed is to add gears. Now there's a ton of different gears you can use, and they all have their pros and cons, so we could do magnetic gearing. Now that does have a tendency to slip, but it's a nice gearing system. We could use straightforward gears and just build up the gears, but they would be quite large. One of my favourites is this, it's a planetary gear system. This is called the ring gear. Then we have the sun gear. And then we have the planet gears, these little one, and this is the planetary carrier. Now the gear ratios of these depend on their relationship to each other. So if we count the number of teeth in there, count the number of teeth in there, add them together, we'll get the effective number of teeth on the planets. That always means that the planet is the biggest number of teeth. The sun is always the smallest, and the planets are always the greatest. The gear ratio of the sun to the planets is always the biggest gear ratio. In this particular one, then we have a gear ratio of three. So every time I turn that one, the sun will turn three times. Now that's kind of cool because it means that if I put that on there and I give that one turn, I'll get three equivalent turns out of that. And that's what we're looking for in something like this because the more speed, the higher the voltage. Of course, it's not terribly useful like that. So what I've done is I've printed out a sun gear. There we go, like that. Because this will fit nicely into there to make us there we go, something we can drive easily. And of course to do that, I turned to Tinkercad and I developed this whole thing in Tinkercad. If you have a look at it, you can see with the three legs is the sun gear. The smaller ones are the planet gears and then we have stacking ring gears where we can stack these one upon the other. So we print all of those off and connect them together like this. Then we can put that in there and we put the ring on over it like that then every time, if we hold the ring still, every time we turn that sun, this will turn three times. Because that's not very much. But we can stack them. So if we stack another one on, then we'll get three times three, nine times. Stack another one on, 27 times. And we can keep on building up a compound sun and planet gear system until we get that to spin, until we can't turn it anymore. Now we can have a look and see what we're actually getting. So let's do that. Right, I've got a ring gear right there, and on the bottom we've got the PC fan motor with its cog on it, and I've connected it up to this meter. And if I give that a spin, we'll be able to generate a voltage. Not a great deal, about 0.5 of a volt or something like that. Now that gear operates as a sun, and of course what it needs is some planets. And I've got here a sun gear where the planet carrier is integral to the sun gear, and the planets are attached to it because I can stack them up. If I put that on there. There we go, we now get a sun and planet arrangement. And if I spin that, we get a much higher voltage. And I can keep doing that by adding rings and adding the sun and planet arrangements to build up a compound arrangement where it adds on. So what we get with one of them, there we get normal speed, put one on, it's three times the speed. Two on, nine times the speed, three times three. Three on, 27 times the speed, and so on as we add these up. Okay, 
Let's put a few on and give it a go. So I've got three sections, so three, nine, 27. We're gonna give it a spin, see what kind of voltage we get. <laughs> Madness! Okay, that went well, so I put another layer on. Let's see what we get. <laughs> we did pretty well getting 17 volts out of this tiny little motor. And the point of all of this? Well, it's exactly what I was talking about when we were at the mill. There's always a mismatch between what you're trying to input and what you're trying to output. When it comes to wind turbines, you've got a wind turbine that's capturing the wind and turning, usually quite slowly with quite a lot of torque. You want to be able to turn that into quite a lot of speed because normally you're attaching a pretty standard motor that you're using as a generator and they're often rated at sort of two to three thousand rpm to get what you want out of it and you need to put some kind of gearing system now when you put a load on them of course they have a torque requirement and that torque requirement will translate up until your wind turbine and of course your wind turbine needs to be big enough to provide the torque requirement at the output end of your wind turbine where you've stuck your generator. The long and the short of it is, you're gonna need some gears between your wind turbine and your generator section. You get a whole host of choices, but these planet gears that you can stack up in a modular form, to me, represent a really nice way of being able to translate your wind turbine input to your generator output. Now I tend to make these things quite chunky for a number of reasons. One, they're great to demonstrate with because you can see them. Two, they're made out of plastic and they're taking a lot of force when it comes down to the bottom so they need to be chunky to prevent them slipping and I just like chunky design. Anyway, I thought I would go through gearing, how it relates to what we talked about at Crabble Mill, how it relates to wind turbines and how it is that we're going to use it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.